this video, we're going to go over some troubleshooting tips with the Tipman A5 marker. This particular video is going to cover maintenance tips and troubleshooting tips on valve leaks or just any leak in general with the Tipman A5 marker. I'm going to first kind of demonstrate what this particular marker is doing. And this marker does have a leak, so we'll just kind of show you. You can kind of hear that leak seems like it's coming down the barrel um, or around the valve assembly where the tombstone actually connects to the valve. And you also hear a little bit coming down the barrel. I usually like to just start off by, you know, airing up the gun, listening for the leak, trying to figure out where the, you know, the leak's coming from. Um, so we know it's coming from this area of the gun. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll dig into it and try to figure out where that leak's coming from. Um, so we'll first start off by removing our push pins and we're gonna disassemble the gun and try to get to that main valve area. So we'll go ahead and remove our push pins and as you can see um, the end cap just kind of popped out there. You want to make sure that your markers not cocked back or you'll actually get that end cap to shoot across the room. So always make sure that your gun's, you know, bolt is forward. So go ahead and remove your uh, guide pin and your drive spring. And we'll remove our grip frame here. And pull our tombstone latch and pull the tombstone out. I usually like to go through and inspect the tombstone. Um, some of the leaks can actually be caused by the tombstone. Um, you know, the face of that tombstone where the O-ring seats, um, you know, you can actually get, you know, a piece of dirt or debris or scratch somewhere where that tombstone seats. So you want to make sure that this is nice and smooth, clean, um, kind of free and clear of any kind of dirt or debris or anything like that. Just kind of go through and inspect it make sure it's nice and smooth. And we'll just go ahead and set that off to the side. And we'll go ahead and remove our valve assembly. Now, um, usually what I like to do is just take the marker, kind of invert it, and just give it a shake. And you can get the bolt assembly to kind of slide out of the back here. And then from there, just grab it by the bolt and linkage arm and just kind of slide everything right out of the back end there. Okay, now we'll go ahead and remove our front bolt, linkage arm, and rear bolt, and we'll take a look at this, uh, this valve assembly here. Now what I have in my hand is just the uh, power tube assembly, and we'll try to get a close up here, but here's the power tube assembly. Your valve is actually on the inside of the power tube assembly. A lot of people call and they say that their power tube's leaking. It's not the power tube. The power tube is just a plastic piece that houses the valve. Now the valve is usually what's leaking. And as you can see, that was our valve washer that kind of fell out there. And I think what's wrong with this particular valve is that it was just uh, you know, reassembled wrong. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Um, you can kind of see we have our uh, large valve O-ring our spring, our uh, plunger, kind of get everything out here. And there we go. And I'll kind of show you the assembly and how it all goes back together. Here's your valve body. Um, usually I just go through and inspect it, just make sure that it's all you know nice and clean and clear of any kind of dirt or debris. Um, you can see on the inside of that valve body, there's an O-ring that sits at the base there. Um, just kind of make sure that that's in place and free and clear of any kind of dirt or debris. Then we have uh, this brass, you know, kind of washer looking thing. Um, this is actually just the valve seat, okay? And this will sit at the base of the valve and that's actually what your plunger goes through and creates a seal. So you can kind of see it, it looks like a brass washer, kind of have, have a top hat look to it. Um, we'll go ahead and just, you know, you can kind of see there's a little ridge right there at the top and that's where your valve plunger actually seats. So we'll just go ahead and drop that into place. And it looks like it dropped in just fine. We'll kind of get even a better better shot than that just to kind of show you how it's supposed to sit in there. 
and you can kind of see that little rim right there. You want to make sure that that's kind of facing the top, and I'll, I'll bring it out one more time. You got that top hat. This should be facing towards the bottom, and that little ring will be at the top. So we'll go ahead and drop that back in there. And if it doesn't sit correctly, just kind of give it a shake and it'll fall into place. And then what I'll do is uh, I usually like to take some kind of tool. You want to get the valve seat kind of seated correctly. So what I usually do is just take something and just kind of lightly press it back into the uh, valve body. So now that you have that seat in there correctly, you can go ahead and put your uh, valve plunger back in and just kind of give it a shake and it'll drop down into place. Make sure that's kind of seated correctly. Then from there you have your spring, your washer, and a lot of people for some odd reason they get the washer and the spring flip-flopped. You always want to make sure that the washer sits on top of the spring. And then you have your large valve o-ring. And then from there, I usually just like to use a screwdriver, just a flathead, and just pop that into the groove that's in the valve body. So you're just going to go ahead and just kind of work your way around and just pop it all back into place. And as you can see, it, it sits flush with the uh, top of the valve body. So now that we have our valve assembled correctly, we'll go ahead and... Uh, Put our marker back together. Just go ahead and take your valve assembly and drop that into the power tube. Just kind of tap that until it seats. And as you can see, you got that rectangular opening there. Go ahead and slide your front bolt back onto the power tube. And we'll go ahead and reconnect our linkage arm to the rear bolt. Reinsert that into the receiver. And if you start to notice that you're getting a little friction in this area, um, that's kind of normal, um, but you don't want to push on that rear bolt because it will actually pop all the internals out of your valve assembly. So what you can do is uh, that rectangular opening in the uh, power tube assembly, you can just kind of, you know, take a tool, put it into that rectangular opening, and just kind of pull everything towards the barrel. And you, you know, you want to do this real carefully. I mean, you can damage the power tube if you too, put too much force on it. And one real easy thing to do would just loosen up those receiver bolts and then it should gently slide towards the front of the marker or the barrel. And then from there, just go ahead and reinstall your tombstone adapter. Always make sure that you put your push pin back in place in front of your tombstone. If you don't have that in there, sometimes what will happen is your tombstone will kind of slide down and the valve o-ring will actually pop up over the tombstone. So you want to make sure that you always have that push pin and tombstone latch in place. So we'll go ahead and reinstall our grip frame. Put our uh, drive spring and guide pin back in place. Our end cap. put all our push pins back in place. We'll go ahead and air it up just to check to see if that leaks taken care of. And give it a couple test shots. And just kind of listen for any other leaks. Um, you know, I don't hear any other leaks with this marker, but you know, uh, if you have your own marker and you're kind of second guessing yourself, you can just put a couple drops of uh, just soapy water around all the connection fittings. You always want to make sure your connection fittings are nice and tight. Um, you know, like I said, just drip a little bit of soapy water around them just to make sure that they're not bubbling up. If they are, then they could be loose. You just want to make sure that those are nice and tight. And that is the uh, troubleshooting for the Tipman A5 air leaks.